I'm not... Hello, Justin. My name's Roger Cook from Central Television. I'm here to ask you why you and your company are breaking the law in this country and conspiring to get others to break the law by supplying child pornography. I don't know anything about it. I don't have it, so... Yes, you do, because we've actually Since acquired when? it from you. When? In my shop? Childhood, the age of innocence, is now under attack as sexual abuse threatens to reach epidemic proportions. This program is about something more depraved and degrading still, the filming of children as they're raped and molested. The films are too terrible to show any more than the first few seconds. The girl is undressed and sexually assaulted. She's probably 11. She probably comes from Germany. She could come from anywhere, even next door to you. Shirley Johnson was once a girl next door. She knows what it's like to be raped for the cameras. Her nightmare began when she was just a toddler. It's bad enough being sexually abused like I was for many years. But having photographs taken and films made while the abuse was going on, is even worse. And then when you become an adult, knowing those pictures and those films are circulating the world, that's just another trauma. There simply is no end to it. Here in the underground vaults of Scotland Yard's obscene publication squad, there are literally thousands of child pornographic videos, magazines and films, all of which have been confiscated from British paedophiles. We are not allowed to show them to you for legal reasons, even if we wanted to, because they depict in the most graphic possible way children as young as four years of age being sexually abused by adults. And this is no glossy centerfold material either, but the most horrific pictorial evidence of the grossest and most callous form of child abuse. What's worse, copies of pictures like the ones in here are now being sold and resold to child molesters right throughout the world. This is a problem which can affect every family and one has got to be aware that the problem does exist and watch your children very closely um, in their development to pick up signs perhaps that uh, there's people, other people from the outside the family taking additional interest and more interest in the children than they should do. So it could be anybody's little girl or little boy dragged into this awful business? Yes. Top London paediatrician, Professor Oliver Brook, was trusted by parents to examine their children. Yet, for nearly a decade, he was a secret child pornographer, collecting, buying and selling obscene pictures of young girls. Brook commissioned pictures from this man, Christopher Hilton. He sold them, together with other obscene material, to these men, Roderick Gegg and John Wilson. He also employed photographer Leslie Freeman to duplicate and package them for resale to the continental child pornography market. Professor Brook was sent to prison for a year, but on appeal, the Lord Chief Justice, Lord Lane, reduced his sentence by half. He said of Brook's activities, It is not inappropriate, perhaps, in view of the puerility of this type of behaviour, to compare it rather to a schoolboy collecting cigarette cards some cigarette cards. Professor Brooks' material was quite significant and uh, in fact this album which is 
typical of um, most pedophiles which we, we come across, contains a lot of indecent pictures of children in various sexual acts and um, photographs concentrating on their genitalia. Last week, Professor Brooke was struck off by the General Medical Council. He will never practice as a doctor again. Professor Brooke, could you please tell me how you, in your position, can justify no being a child pornographer? No problem. Why did you not assist the police in clearing up the rest of the ring? We placed advertisements in softcore sex magazines, repeating word for word one of Brooke's adverts for child pornography. We received more than 50 replies. I'm in possession of a couple of Lolita videos featuring genuine schoolgirls, and I'm now keen to purchase mags and photos. I'd be willing to pay top price for any quality material. I've a mixture of hardcore and soft porn featuring girls from 8 to 15 years. Please write back by return post, as I'd like to know where and when we can meet to exchange. So it was he we decided to call on. A researcher with a radio microphone had gone ahead, pretending to be on a buying trip. Mr. Fraser, my name's Roger Cook from Central Television. I'm here to ask you why you deal in child pornography. I don't deal in it. You do? You have a whole load of it here. We've just heard you offer to swap and sell. I don't feel I'm doing anything wrong. The law says you're doing something very wrong. And yeah, you but... know that every picture, each picture of those little girls, is the result of a bit of gross child abuse. The worst possible sort of child abuse. Raping little girls. I won't rape a little girl. I, lo I love little girls. That's all I feel. I love for them. Yes, but the pictures in here depict rapes of little girls, don't they? No, they don't. <laughs> they do. The girls are willing. The girls don't know what they're doing at that age. You know that. No, I've had enough. I'll pack it up. I'm, s I'm sorry about it, but I, I just can't help it. You're going to pack it up, are you? No, I'll pack it up. Why don't you burn this stuff right now? Okay. Let's see you do it. The remainder of his substantial stock in trade has now been passed to the police. But Keith Fraser is a relatively small fish. Others are not. This man is both a paedophile and a commercial producer of child pornography. He's only just finished a two-year prison sentence for sexually abusing young girls. The prison hasn't worked at all in any way whatsoever. I still find myself sexually turned on by young girls. In actual fact, I do find myself going out fairly often to the fun fair that we have here in the town and uh, looking out for the girls that hang around there. But how old were the girls involved in this? The youngest were 12, the varied in age 12, 13, up to 16, 18. How can you justify what you did? How do you justify it? You don't, you don't stop to think. Because in actual fact, you are getting what you basically need, and it was a pretty lucrative trade because it fetched in quite a fair amount of money. How much money are we talking about? You're talking about, in some cases, up to £200 a film. And how many films were you making? Uh, three to six a week in the beginning, but it did escalate up. And I was turning out two or three films a day sometimes. Nobody can fully understand the way it leaves one feeling when they've been abused as a child. The physical damage, they can be scarred for life and they can be internally battered. And in some cases, even deprive them of having children. The mental damage, they can literally end up in mental homes and be suicidal by the time they're 16. How many people are there like you in this area? I would say making video films, at least two dozen people. Enjoying them, it runs into thousands. It really does run into thousands of people. One of the few people working to control men like this is full-time professional counsellor Ray Wire. 
Some of the men that I worked with have said that for every one of them that's caught, there are another thousand of them actually getting away with it. And for every one who commits an offence against one child that's caught, many of them have actually been involved with at least a hundred. Ray Wire's counselling groups force paedophiles to admit the use of child pornography is anything but a harmless safety valve. Well, what, what do you feel? No, because it, at the time you're looking at the, the book or the pornographic photographs, it's fine. But then you're not going to look at them all day. And what level of pornography will that be? You know, men behaving with boys as one would wish to. I would wish to. They say they're photographs as well? Photographs, yeah. The photographs, the videos, are used for a variety of reasons. One of the reasons is it lowers the inhibition of the man who's using it. He actually will feel that his behaviour is pretty normal in the context of this pornography. I fell in love with a little boy about 12, and he's a charming, fair-haired, blue-eyed boy. And he's come to my house, and uh, to get him involved a little quicker than the other normal procedure, the pornography was laying about. And I could sort of encourage him to read it and also... What did that by, do then? By example, he helped me to get the boy quicker. And uh, from that on, and then on, you see, after he saw what could be done and he agreed, because we performed the acts that were in the book. Books like Lolita, the biggest internationally distributed of all child pornography magazines. But Lolita also acts as a contact point for paedophiles looking for new children to molest and to photograph. In the United States, the only Western country to take the problem seriously, police confirmed that international child pornography nearly always begins at home. The original material is virtually always produced uh, by amateurs. It will be provided to the professional distributors who reproduce it and distribute the material literally on an inter international scale. It's distributed all over the world. But the original production of the material, the actual photos, videotapes, or movies, are virtually always produced by persons who are molesting the children. So the producers are the abusers? That is correct. I progressed from a Polaroid camera, basically, and then went up to a video camera and then started taking films. I met this one girl first. She came along with a friend of hers. That friend introduced her friend, so it escalated up. And I eventually had between, what, over a two-year period, you're talking about 200 girls. All involved in these films? Oh, yes. yes. Many of those hundreds of videos were exported to Holland, the European distribution centre for all forms of pornography. Although new Dutch laws outlawed child pornography last year, we were able to buy it over the counter in several sex shops, including this one, a branch of the Erex chain, one of Holland's largest pornography distributors. It's quite difficult to lay your hands on it. I'll do that and try that always. But I'm also one of the people who say I never promise, because yeah, right. I hate false pretenses. Yeah. Yeah. No, the I dealer, who introduced himself as Justin, offered us a choice from a colour catalogue of 24 videos featuring children as young as seven. And then I show you how I glue the tape onto the reel so that you don't have to pro have any problems when you go to England and change it out. He then demonstrated how the tape would be broken down to be smuggled through British customs. <coughs> Quite easy. Take this one out. He was very careful not to mention the true nature of the material, insisting we refer to it as the lingerie collection. Yeah, but I talk always about lingerie, not about anything else. Right. And if you come for the tape this week, I'm working in the evenings, not in the daytime. Yeah? Okay. See you. Bye-bye. Within a week, Justin delivered as promised. This package, hand-delivered without a stamp, and disguised inside a typewriter ribbon box was what we got for our 200 pounds. Inside, broken down from a video cassette, just as Justin had demonstrated, is the spool. And it's a relatively simple matter to reassemble it, just as he showed us. Ready for viewing.
what happens next to this little girl most people would find sickening. But Justin was more than happy to supply our researcher with more of the same kind of material. Hello, Justin. Hello. What, what have you? I would advise you to number five or to number ten or number twelve out of this series, and I have no problem in sending it up for you. When are you over? I'm coming over on Monday. Next Monday? Yeah, it, it, it will be Monday evening. That's all right. See you on Monday then. Hello, uh, Justin. My name's Roger Cook from Central Television. I'm here to ask you why you and your company are breaking the law in this country and conspiring to get others to break the law by supplying child pornography. I don't know anything about it. I don't have it, so... Yes, you do, because we've actually Since acquired when? it from you. When? In my shop? In your shop, most definitely. Don't know anything about it. I'm afraid it. you're making a liar of yourself because we have actually acquired it in broken-down cassette form. And it's all on film. And that's strange. I'm uh, seeing, but will you please stop filming? Why? Because it's forbidden in this country to film someone without permission. It's also forbidden to sell child pornography. I told you to stop filming now. Which is what you're doing. You're selling child pornography. I don't sell it. I'm afraid you are. I'm sorry, what are you putting down? But I do phone my boss and talk with him. He's only going to say the same as you, isn't he? That you don't supply it, and yet we've had it, it from you. The new right. German film? I'm afraid you do. Hey, come on. As the lights went out, the boss arrived. We're here because you're selling child pornography. Listen, we don't do anything here. Yes, you do. Oh, yes. Throw it I'm away. afraid you do. You're here in my shop. Get out, uh, or I call the police. Do call the police. Our departure was encouraged by the strategic application of a billiard cue and a lighted cigar. Oh, go on. Give him the head. And immediately. Ouch! I'm telling you. You're selling child pornography. No, no. Ouch! Put that down. No. You just go out and very quickly. Put that I down. I tell you to go out. It's your time now. It's Put that down. Oh, you will collect some people here. You'll we'll collect some you people and kill us all. You'll collect some people and kill us all, you're saying? You have obviously have no answer to the charges, do you? No answers whatsoever. Child pornography from dealers like Justin is regularly sent north to the fishing village of Den Helder and then on by trawler to Britain for rerouting elsewhere. Mail from England is rather less suspect than that from Holland. So Britain has become a key staging post for supplying the biggest child pornography market of all, America. charges laid in America against this woman revealed the extent of the child pornography industry worldwide. Black Kathy Wilson's mail order empire stretched across three continents through America, Australia and Europe. She held bank accounts in Switzerland and the Cayman Islands, ran a fleet of luxury limousines and filled a Los Angeles warehouse with imported child pornography. Her mailing list ran to 30,000 names, many of them British. She sensed that people were unwilling to distribute child pornography. Organized crime shied away from it. Um, her boss shied away from it. And so she decided that she would take up where others had left off. What and was her attitude to it? She thought it was a product that was desired. Uh, she compared it to toothpaste. And she said that it was just like toothpaste in that people wanted it, so people would get it. it involves thousands of children over the years and it continues to hurt children. They're exposed to the child pornography on a regular basis. Um, victims of child abuse have often been shown child pornography prior to their own abuse to show them that other children are doing the things that they've been asked to do, to show them that the children are having fun In the child pornography films, you see very stilted attempts to have the children smile as they're being abused. And, and the child pornographers and, and child molesters often focus on those semi-smiles to try to convince the children that they'll have fun and it will be something good and that they're not the only ones who do this sort of thing. 
children can be very easily manipulated and emotionally blackmailed. Especially the deprived ones, the ones that aren't getting what they want at home, the love and affection that all children require. And if somebody comes along and offers them that, they will take it. They will, they will be bribed, they will be manipulated, they will be blackmailed. And once they're in the trap? There is no way out. Paedophiles will always find a way. They will always find a way to abuse and manipulate a child. A, they're making money out of it, aren't they? And they're always looking for new victims. These days, paedophiles are finding increasingly sophisticated ways to get their victims. Telephone-linked, computer-based sex bulletin boards using ordinary commercial software have become the child pornographer's latest forum. Indeed, the computer is one of the more popular ways in this country now to access people who have a similar interest. Uh, indeed, let me take the up effort. We'll see if we can locate and talk to one of the bulletin boards that focuses on children. This particular bulletin board is one which uh, I'm signed on to with a pseudonym, and I'm listed as having three daughters who are all preteens. And I have received requests for pictures of my daughters. I have received offers from people who would like to trade me pictures of their children for my children. And I've also received solicitations from people who are seeking to trade sexual experiences with my children. They will let me have sexual experiences with their children. That seems quite appalling. I agree with you, it is appalling. Indeed, my suspicion would be that there are already sexually oriented bulletin boards in Great Britain. Our researchers have proved that he was right. There are already two computer sex bulletin boards in Britain which are beginning to offer child pornography. So for those who are sick enough to want this vile material, access to it is now available at the push of a button. Now, I'm very interested in schoolgirls and very young girl material. Where can I get some? Have you any for sale? I can't seem to find any. Regards, John. How far are you aware of the problem of the computer sex bulletin boards, which seem to be sweeping the states at the moment? That's why well, it's said that we're five years behind America's developments, but um, we are aware of it, but so far we haven't been able to get in. Uh, we haven't got a telephone number, because that's all you need. And um, maybe we'll get lucky someday. Well, we can give you a telephone number. We've actually tapped into two of these bulletin boards ourselves already. What, in the UK? Yeah. Well, I'd be delighted to have that information. Thanks very much. Scotland Yard has now begun an investigation of those two bulletin boards. But so inadequate are their resources, they've yet to target any of Cathy Wilson's British customers. I think that if they were to open an investigation on each one of Cathy Wilson's customers, they would find that many ready-made cases. Um, those people, I don't know the laws in Britain, but in the United States, those people could be prosecuted for commercially receiving the child pornography. We've obtained copies of several lists from the United States. This one alone contains more than 60 English names, amongst them businessmen, bankers, doctors, and military personnel. As we understand it, the list was passed to Interpol, but so far it hasn't filtered down to New Scotland Yard. The cooperation for child pornography is very high because I think it's universally recognized uh, as an abhorrent sort of crime. And uh, we th deal with the US Customs, who are uh, extremely cooperative to us. And they send you lists, or rather send the authorities in this country lists? Yes. Of names uh, of consumers? Our li liaison with uh, US Customs is, is very good, and they supply this office because of the contact we've developed uh, with lists, yes. Well, have you seen this list? Well, off the top of my head, um, I don't think we've seen this list, no. But it's been sent, so it hasn't percolated down to you. It's been sent by whom? It's been sent by US Customs. No, I haven't, I haven't seen that list, no. Would you like it? Oh, obviously. Um, it's yours. It's, oh, thanks very much. It's like a drug addict, really. Um, when you first experience 
a puff on a cigarette or marijuana joint or something like that, you go on to something bigger. What's very clear is that it, there's an escalation. And that as escalation can start with the mutual masturbation pictures and actually go right through. And, and, I've, and the man's actually told me that he's ended with looking at videos that include the killing and the death of the child. You have said that you could go as far as murder. Yes, so I'm saying this for the simple reason, how far does one go for kicks? I haven't reached that pinnacle yet. I don't know if I could. It's quite possible that I could, but I haven't as yet.